to call the meeting to order. The purpose of tonight's meeting is to discuss the teacher's contract with the DEA and between the DEA and the Board of Education. Um, I know that all of you got memorandum that was sent around quite a while ago. Mm -hmm. And then, um, thanks to Teresa Floyd, uh, we have a copy of the contract. I just wanted to point it out as a means of a little bit of a lesson learned. Um, I hope that the Board of Ed would send the contract to the Education Committee too, because um, if we hadn't gotten it through Teresa, we wouldn't have gotten it at all. So and I got it through the rules, keeping <laughs> on rules for whatever reason. So anyway, I think it was rules. sent to the RTM, and it was posted publicly. Okay, because so I know it just didn't get distributed. No, it didn't get not. distributed apparently. It so was sent um, to, we, Anne and I, got it as part of rules, but it was not. Nobody distributed to the full RTM. So. So anyway, just gonna throw it back to you guys. I was like, do you know we sent it forward? But okay. we're happy in the future but to I get think, it to the committee. I think Karen, is that her name? Oh yes. I think she's having. Yeah, she's having. She's getting. She's getting. She's, she's getting. She's getting. She's getting. She's getting. She's getting. She's getting. Just so you, I mean, that means if the RTM was supposed to get it, uh, they did. They might not have gotten it. They either, so just it. so you know. Yeah. So I don't know the RTM distribution. Okay. Setup. Okay. I know that. We delivered it, it was not part of the packet. No. Okay. No. Well, you have it now, and we'll discuss it in the future. future. We will make sure the RTS education and F and B already have it. Yeah, because F and B apparently had it too. Okay. So. Um, anyway, I think all of us have read the contract, and perhaps we have questions. But I think that it would be good if you all introduce it and let us know sort of a summary. Maybe it'll be similar to the memorandum that you sent. Would that work for you all? Sure. <coughs> I mean, I'll do a quick overview, and then I can throw it to the superintendent. Um, and um, Marge Sion, Human Resources here, and Rich Ru Rudel, our Director of Finance, if they want to add um, any color. And then if you have any specific questions, we're happy to answer them. Um, so the Negotiations Committee entered into this process. I'd say that it was a long kind of um, a good negotiation that everyone left the table, feeling that they could lay <coughs> things on it. Um, and so that that's probably the sign of the best negotiation when nobody leaves entirely happy. Um, but we do feel that we struck um, a good contract for the next three years for the town that um, respects kind of the town and the finances and the teachers. Um, we certainly made some really significant gains that we have been trying as part of a longer thought out process um, from the last contract, the most significant being that in the prior contract, we got a cohort of teachers that were only contractually obligated to teach four classes, up to 4.5. In this contract, we got those teachers who are at 4.5 up to five classes. That's um, both significant savings immediately and also really through attrition going forward. It's standard practice um, in most towns in Connecticut. We think it allows us um, both financial gains but also some more flexibility with scheduling. Um, and lets us be a little more creative both at the middle school and the high school. Um, as you can imagine, you know, there were some pretty strong feelings on the DEA side about that. Um, certainly it increased workload for about 120 teachers, 120 teachers. Um, but we also feel this contract, we heard some of their concerns about adoptive parent leave, um, about sick leave. Um, so we, we do feel that we struck a very fair bargain going forward. One of the things I would just highlight is that some of the headline numbers um, originally caught um, attention in terms of step cost. And I would say two things are going on there. One, Darian's been very savvy in their negotiations. As part of that, um, you will see increased step costs, and those total costs are not always realized. So you should look at this contract is the maximum guaranteed amount paid. It is not the guaranteed amount paid. So with turnover, we often find savings within the contract. Um, another thing that some people had asked over in F&B about, well, you know, why do we see um, different districts or settling one way, or why do we see municipal contracts one way? Often, um, our teachers are younger. They're not at the top step. Top step only has a 1.5 GWA, a GWI increase. So if you see some that say, well, our most of our increases are 1.5 percent, well, that's teachers at the highest possible salary. Um, so how you report is very important. School districts also report step and GWI. Municipal contracts only report GWI. So 
So we got some questions on, well, I saw a municipal contract that settled out at 2%. And nothing away from those negotiations, I think our municipal contracts have been negotiated well. But the next question would be, okay, what's their step cost, right? So it's just a difference in reporting. So I think we, we can talk more if people have questions on that. But that's kind of the high level. We, um, we feel that we you know, kept our teacher salaries competitive. Um, Marge can talk a little bit about the importance of that in hiring cost us, costs and how we align, realign some step costs. Um, and um, you know, Rich can also speak, or Dr. Adley, to the savings due to the four and a half to five. But I would say our, our students are also willing to financial savings. Our students are in a much better position because of that in terms of flexibility with schedule and what we'll probably be able to offer them going forward. Um, so that's kind of my high level. I don't know if there's. Sure. Um, well, good evening, everybody. Uh, it's nice to see you again. But thank you for the opportunity to uh, talk to the, the contract. I've, I've said since I got here um, early on, it was quite evident. I knew when I was coming here. Um, but it's also been evident since I've been here. The biggest, to me, the biggest asset you have in the town are your, is the staff, the teaching staff. Some of you have been teachers, um, but they are phenomenal, right? For their professionalism, their expertise, their commitment and dedication to the town and to the children, especially. Uh, you have got exceptional teaching staff, right? Um, and it's with that context that uh, I appreciate your consideration of supporting the contract. Uh, in support of, of your teaching staff because uh, they're, they're just a phenomenal group of people, professionals. Uh, so I thank you for that. Uh, I think you know that the, the contract itself came to uh, 10.93 over the three years. To give a wee bit of perspective, uh, the previous contract came to 10.3, just for, for perspective purposes. Um, with the score to four and a half to five, uh, you may have saw a number just uh, in excess of $200,000 of savings. Those are real savings right off the top. Uh, so we will realize that right off the top and over the course of the three years that the actual contract then would be 9.59. Uh, so for next year, it'll be $200,000 savings and over the three years, it'll be basically six, over $600,000 savings. Those are real numbers, those aren't dependent numbers. So really the contract itself comes in at about uh, 9.59. Uh, so that gives a wee bit of perspective. Uh, somebody, uh, one of the questions we received, I think, asked, like, that, that doesn't seem to be a big number in relation to the number of uh, teachers uh, that you have who possibly can go from four to half to five. That is true, uh, but the commitment was to do this primarily through attrition. Uh, we certainly don't want to overcommit to uh, our constituents, uh, so we're representing what we know to be actual uh, hard numbers. I think this contract also addresses uh, one of the issues that we have is attracting uh, staff members, particularly at the uh, onset of their career, primarily because if you're a new teacher, or first year teacher, second year teacher, or third year teacher, you're getting paid the same, right? Uh, that, that's, that's hard, uh, that, that was a hard sell for some uh, new staff members. That, that caused a problem in attracting new people. Uh, the grid itself is very competitive, um, and we appreciate that. Uh, we have had, um, uh, we've certainly have a better year uh, this past year in terms of uh, attrition because there has been an issue of attrition. So that keeps us, the, the contract itself uh, continues to keep us very healthy uh, in that context. Uh, the teachers, you know, going four and a half to five, uh, they say a good deal is whenever two sides are not happy um, at the end of the day. And I think there was, I, I think there's, there's something to be said about it. And I think that's the way both parties walked away a little bit. Um, as much as it's a, it perhaps a hard sell just to some degree uh, with our constituents and the, and the community, within the teachers it's also a hard sell because uh, they're also teaching more classes. Uh, we also have had um, an opportunity to a memorandum of understanding in the contract uh, to discuss uh, additional time, wrap time, which is before time and after time, uh, to increase levels of, of, of supervision. So I'll leave it there for a moment because we can certainly uh, talk about any particular aspect to that. I don't know if anybody wants to embellish anything. We'll give you a chance of question. Um, okay, so let's see. Do we have uh, I, have, I have a question. I mean, because uh, I do feel like turnover, correct me if I'm wrong, because you would know better, but it just seems the turnover at the high school 
is far higher than it is the middle school and the elementary levels. Um, do you find that? And then I guess the second question would be, given where we're located, because I know New York, I think, has a better pay and pension schedule. Okay. Yeah. So is it harder to find because we're so close to the border? Is it harder to find? <laughs> Our teachers, uh, um, teachers in general, can sometimes have a hard time living close by. So you're dealing with teachers with long drives. Sometimes yeah. that's what affects turnover as well, if someone can get a job closer to home. Um, I don't know if turnover at the high school is higher. It might depend on department, looking at department, department, middle school. But I don't know that we've seen an overwhelming trend that it's more at the high school than the middle school. Actually, I feel like both my kids have a lot of first year teachers this year. I think there were a lot of teachers who have been at the high school for a while, so that's part of it. And I think it's also department specific. So I know that special education and science, two shortage areas, we've had some mm -hmm. turnover more than usual. But I, again, I agree with Tara, it's not more, it's probably just the luck of your kids to draw. <laughs> <laughs> and it could be luck. Maybe it's good luck. Mm, not so much. <laughs> well, I would, I would say this, though, right? Uh, to, to sort of there's two issues. One was the whole attractiveness, um, and it is it is attractive, right? And um, when I was hiring people this summer, uh, I don't think anybody turned me down for another district. Um, but when you look at the percentage of people at that, at really at the top step, we're that's it sounds like a, a big number, like around thirty percent, but it's actually a low low number. Um, so we are competing with some of the surrounding towns. I mean, it's you compete with. Uh, Transportation here, traffic. Uh, um, most of our staff live out, out, out of the town, right? Um, so we can we compete with some of those uh, parameters, both in New York and also the surrounding towns. Um, so it'd be nice to, to see that actual number uh, be bigger, because that's what's costing us a lot of money. Because there's a lot of people moving in step, and they aren't at the top. Um, okay. Other, I, I know. I just want to mention Peter had sent in a whole list of questions. I don't know, and I sent them to you. I, I don't know if you're thinking of answering tonight. I've been answering some of them as I go here, I think. Okay, uh, so. And, and so you have some more? Okay. Yeah, well, tell us, do you want to go? No, no, I want, I want to sort out. Peter. If you indulge me, I don't live in this world, right? But I want to, this is the way I'm thinking about it, and I want to get your perspective on it. So you came here, you inherited people and a system, right? 485 teachers. And so I wanted to understand measurable goals in your mind, how you think about the people, right? What's the quality? What's their satisfaction? Um, what's their turnover? What's the medium step? Where are they in the system, right? So that's sort of regarding the people, personnel. And the second part is you inherited a system, right? You inherited a org chart that drives outcomes, right? Which is what's the reporting? What's the recruiting? How are they evaluated? Can they, can they collaborate? What's professional development and all that? So that's what you inherited. And now, if I think three years forward, if we sit here again, Right? And I say, well, did you do a good job? Did you, did you drive the system wherever you want it? And I know there's some limitations. And the question is really related to the contract in a way. Forget the money. The town will pay the money. will decide whether it's acceptable or not. But more, are there things in there that doesn't allow you, don't allow you to put the system where you want it to be? Are you satisfied with the system as it is now? Are you satisfied with the people? And can we sort of look at the numbers? And maybe not tonight, obviously. but. Sure over time saying, okay, this is the turnover, this is the satisfaction, there's some surveys. And you know, I guess the first principle for me is obviously better teachers, better student outcomes, right? If we all agree on that, that should be ours, right? So then how do we do the teacher? See, I don't think it's about money. I don't think maybe it is on, on, the, on sort of, on, you know, in some cases, but I think it's about job satisfaction, freedom to teach, not being told from the top what needs to be done. Um, and, um, you know, are the, there's a couple of questions I have, right? Are the salaries, I didn't see it anywhere here, they, they don't seem to be tied to any student outcomes. So how do you differentiate in salary between the people, of, you know, who are doing good job or bad job, right? And second thing, this whole tenure, I mean, what kind of system is this? Why, you know, why does it work? I mean, why, you know, why would, I don't go to job, I've been there 15 years. Welcome and, to America. And I have a better, yeah, I have so a worse okay. outcome than somebody who's been there two months. Why should I be paid more? Right. So anyway, so there's a bunch of questions. We can go into the contract specifics, but basically, what I wanted to hear: Are you happy where we are now? What are the ideas that you have to get us to the sort of nirvana, right? Because I don't think we're. See, we spend a lot of money, and at some point, money don't doesn't matter anymore, right? For student, we spend twenty-one thousand dollars. That's a lot. The best in the country, probably one of them, right? For public education, you know. So 
what, how do we make these students better, right? Anyway, that's a loaded question, I know, but that's, yeah, I don't live in a day to day, I'm just trying to think about what would make sense. I'll, I'll go through the chair here if you want me to answer sure. that question. I was just going to say, you know, I think one thing that, you know, we, we need to remind ourselves is the contract has been negotiated. So I think, right. and you pointed out that um, some of the things in this contract have been things you've been thinking about for a while. So I think Peter is giving you ideas about things sure. you might be thinking about between now and the next contract. You know, they're sort of very big long-term goals. But I think, you know, it's important to answer as many of his questions as you can. So. Um, there are differences between the business world and the education world. So, you know, I, I, I'm anxious to hear what you think. Yeah, so uh, if, I, if I miss a question, it's not because I'm no, deliberately it's okay. not. Okay. I'm okay. just trying to capture the. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I actually appreciate uh, what you're saying in the sense of there comes a point where it's not, it's not about money, right? Um, now, there, there does come a point where it's like, show me the money, right? In some cases, right? Just over a long period of time. Um, but in this, in this case, I, I agree with you that. Teachers do what they do, not, not necessarily for the money, and there comes a point where, where that's not the case, and there has to be inner satisfaction and motivation and happiness and contentment of what they do. And I'm telling you, your teachers, right, um, are absolutely dedicated to the kids. I will say this, they feel a bit lonely sometimes, right? Um, they want to be supported, continue to be supported. And you're, this is an organization I would think you would hope and expect to be all about continuous school improvement. And that, that would be the journey that would be on, and that's what I would uh, hope to bring to uh, the district, stability of leadership, support the, the, the professional capital, of all the staff, certified, non-certified uh, non staff, improve the programming for uh, the kids, the teachers themselves, for an evaluation, you're right, this is a over 100 year old system that's archaic and um, uh, it, we're just, it, it's an archaic system, okay? Um, but it, it is the system that is uh, grounded in, in uh, Connecticut and very familiar right across the country. Um, so that's a, that's a, that's a tough uh, boat to turn around a little bit and we just have to deal with what we have to deal with. Um, but uh, there is no, like, if a, if a teacher, like if, if you're thinking like pay for performance or merit pay, that's not part of, that's not part of the system. Um, uh, there's different there's different perspectives on whether pay performance is good or different, but that's not uh, currently part of the system. You should know that teachers are evaluated, right? Um, so I think an evaluation of a school system is is uh, yes, student performance, yes, the satisfaction of parents, right? Uh, is the programming good? Are the outcomes there? Is it, is it a diverse? Are we uh, curriculum? Are we producing innovators, creators, leaders? Uh, all of those things. Um, so, I mean, uh, many of it, uh, many of the things that you're, you're discussing, I, I would agree with you. But uh, you're absolutely right. The greatest influence on a kid, not rocket science, is the teacher in front of them. You know that. I know that um, from from actually living it. And so, building their capacity, supporting them, creating opportunities for them, just as you said, to be an innovative together. Right? Um, those are things that uh, I am noticing. I will say that uh, the teachers. In fairness to our teachers uh, who came to the table through the contract, uh, they started, they, well, they gave more, right? Both in time uh, and also some, some other processes. So uh, we start to move incrementally, right? Um, and I find your teachers are, are, will work very collaboratively. The, the union will work very collaboratively with the administration. Um, I have high expectations of myself and the district and uh, of our staff. And, I look, I look forward to supporting them and, and continue to build uh, the program. But I kind of, I think, in general, I'm, I'm generally agreeing with your sentiments. I, th I think, too, Peter, to your question from a board perspective, um, you know, a lot of that just isn't in the system. Collective bargaining, tenure, like that's that's just it what, what, what we it, yeah. what we have to work with. Yeah. But part of these negotiations were really both hearing teachers and their concerns, some of which we had to, you know say these are actually not collective bargaining issues, but I think that what this administration, this team has been really good at, um, and I've had the pleasure of four superintendents, if you can. <laughs> I it was a pleasure, I just don't yeah, know. I was gonna say, I do think that this team, the teachers seem to be, feel they're very heard, from, heard by. 
Um, and that's key, because right at some point saying, I'm gonna give you $200 more, doesn't necessarily motivate someone. It's more recognizing, hearing their passion. The same thing is the board is really invested now in the strategic plan. And part of that is really what's at the heart, I think, of your question. What's the vision going forward? Um, Dr. Adley walked in with a contract to be negotiated within his first 60 days um, as superintendent. So again, you're good luck, thanks. Um, but I do think most of your questions probably, as we go through the strategic planning question uh, process, your questions are gonna be key and vital. And even in the original first meeting, I've heard some of the teachers bring up and some of the parents bring up some of what, some of what you're getting at. So I'm, I would agree with you, I don't think all the answers are in this contract, but I think your questions are similar to what the board is asking as well. I'm not sure that's helpful, but. You wanna just, let's just take no. turns, with, okay, sure. we'll get back to you. How about Barbara? Just an observation that I did notice, and it's not always apparent to anyone, lay folks, that CEUs are encouraged and rewarded, and um, <coughs> a number of teachers <clears throat> at least in my experience, we're always willing to go find a, another course or another something to, to learn and be better yeah. and continue to do that and that's part of the step system. I don't know if you're aware of that, but that's... And that's supported in this contract as well. And that's supported and it's encouraged, yeah. And, and, and when you get to the top, you sit there a while, mm -hmm. yeah. year after year, being happy <laughs> and continuing because working with some really cool people. All of your teachers are committed to professional learning. Yes. I think that's a characteristic of this district. Yeah. Does everybody know what CEUs are? No. Uh, continuing education units? Yeah. Yes. I just yeah. want to because you yeah. get accused yeah. of too much jargon. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, any other comments, questions? I have one question. Okay. I just wonder if anything will change in the teacher's contract based on what happens with like the new health care that we're trying to negotiate uh, pot potentially, if it depends on uh, it depends on which uh, plan uh, that we select, or, or it would potentially uh, call, require some discussion back and forth if we change plans significantly. Um, I'm hopeful that I haven't shared the latest update with the board. Uh, it will be at the, at the next meeting, so. Um, I should probably do that first with the board as to where we are yeah. with that process, but. I just didn't know, um, you know, if it, if it was um, set in stone, if there was no ability to modify, and we had a, a new healthcare plan that was, you know, more detrimental, if it would be impactful here and that we weren't able to change terms at that point. Um, well, it would have to be, it would have to be some part com compatible to what we, we, they have in the contract at the moment. Yeah. So our teachers pay amongst the highest in the state, mm -hmm. 21%. Um, Within 1%? 21%, 21%. Yeah. they pay for their oh, health care, for their yeah. care yeah. which is um, which is a lot, which yeah. you won't find in a lot of contracts. Um, and it's, it's one of the gifts that they get. But the, con the carrier can be changed as long as the benefits are substantially similar. Is, is that right? Okay, so I don't know if that was what you were asking about. I just didn't know if there was exposure if um, we agreed to certain terms for you know their health benefits in the contract, and yet we unfortunately come to terms with like a much worse deal with a healthcare provider. That's what was that the point. But the contract protects right. yeah. the because benefits that yeah. the it's teachers have. Yeah. Okay. Um, other comments? Is that here. So how does this conference, and John Zagrotsky had a great sort of slide in the state of the town um, presentation in December when he puts the current and new contract side by side. So how does this, you know, we have 3.6 or whatever, right, over the three years. How does it compare to the last three years? Is it a similar number? Is it higher number? I think the last contract they were 3.4. Um, and so that's where some of the, the language in this sure, that's contract, there's yeah. also financial gains, like the, the, the four and a half classes versus mm -hmm. the five. Yeah. So um, there's 3.67 in this versus 3.4 one year. And again, it's and, and you said it before, it's actually how that cohort is moving through 
um, is moving through the grid. So, so that affects it too at times, but I'd say financially they're, they're comparable contracts and they probably gain some financial language and they gain some, um, uh, I want to say like, you know, living benefits, but they, they, they felt strongly about adoptive parent leave, they felt strongly about spousal leave, they felt strongly, and so there were some gains made in there for them. So, and that's where Alan is saying, like any good negotiation, everyone gave a little and got a little. Is the contract, the past one, the one that's actually current now, is that online somewhere in an archival place where if somebody wanted to look at it, they could go look at it? Yeah, it's up on the board of us. It's on the board of us, so if you wanted to get the whole thing out and look at it, you could. Yeah. Okay. Um, go ahead. It's the, uh, you know, if we didn't have, as you said, the whole sort of average mean moving and changing into three and a half, from step one to step 19, right, one life, one teacher, What's the annual increase? Because I'm looking at what John put on the paper, and it's like the steps are four and a half to five percent. So on average, <laughs> it ranges depending on where you are. On the yeah, um, right. So the largest increase you'll get is when you go from step 18 to 19. Yeah. Um, and part of that is uh, when there's no step movement at the top, you typically have a higher DWI. So for this contract, it's one and a half at the top and a half percent anywhere else. Right. Um, so it can range anywhere from about a high of four and a half to five to a low of you know, about one. So on average three and a half, that's sort of, yeah. at the end of it, it comes yeah. the same number? Yeah. Okay. Um, how does this, how are the absolute numbers for, you know, 50, 50 year teacher in his, you know, in his life uh, compared into the neighboring town or sort of, so she's not, you know, similar? So the teacher grid itself is pretty comparable to our dirt peers of New Canaan and Westport, mm -hmm. uh, Weston, Ridgefield, and Wilton. Uh, we're pretty much well in line. Uh, the one area that was mentioned earlier where we were a little less competitive uh, is for that new teacher. Uh, we do treat teachers with zero, one or two years experience essentially the same. So a new teacher with zero experience making $54,000 is very good. A teacher with two years experience making $54,000 is less good um, compared to the our peers. Uh, that's one of the reasons that cohort uh, was adjusted in the new contract so those newer teachers can be more competitive. Yeah, I, don't want, I don't have it in front of me but I want to say we were something like, you know, 22nd in the state in that two or three year, which made it hard to hire at that level. But it's the same thing, sometimes you want to get staff in at that age coming right out of school and have them stay in there again. Um, so it was one of the reasons why we made some adjustments. In terms of, oh, go ahead. I'm just going to ask, do, when you hire in a teacher, is there, uh, I, I worked for a company and we had um, scale for pilots and it was not uncommon to hire someone in at five years experience that you really wanted, but to put them at step seven or 12. Yeah. Do you have that kind of flexibility or the, the years of experience is a calculated number and it can't vary? And uh, so uh, in gen generally speaking, you're right in the second scenario that it, it, it's, it's, it's um, a, a figment of the number of years, but there is some flexibility in there for uh, shortage areas of, of where you can't get a teacher, right? Or there's a shortage of perhaps special education or a math and science teacher. Or, uh, so there's some flex, there, the, the contract allows me some flexibility uh, to, to make some decisions. In terms of um, being attractive, Darian being attractive to other towns in the hiring process, um, have you noticed whether other towns um, have the um, change or have, do they allow for teachers to teach five classes rather than four and a half? And how do you know what the schedule is for each of the surrounding towns for negotiating their contract? I mean, are we, sometimes the town that's kind of first, they sort of set the standard and then others kind of compete with that. Do you, when you look at, say, Greenwich, West, and New Canaan, are they on the same negotiating schedule as we are, or are they on a different one? So Weston is on the same as us. Okay. Um, I believe New Canaan and West are very active. Yeah. 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 Uh, no, yeah, they're the year before us. Yeah. And then I think Greenwich might have been with us this year, and but they began their negotiations earlier, so they I think settled before us. Um, so I, I guess what I'm where I'm going is, could you lose people? You know, if, if these other towns think, oh look, Darien has increased the number of uh, classes that a teacher has to teach, and people become unhappy and say Greenwich decides um, they're going to keep it at four. So it's pretty standard across the state to be teaching five. It's we were, standard. We were okay. one of the last, 
I shouldn't say one of the last, but there are very few districts that were still teaching for a 4.5. I see. And so but, I, okay. I don't think that will have people leaving us. I think if they were going around else, they'd be facing a five class code. Okay. I, I'm going to channel Duke. Yeah. Um, is there anything in this contract that you think will help with our substitute issues? <laughs> well, Duke was on the negotiations committee. Yeah. <laughs> No contract language, but we work closely, Dr. Adley and I, with all of the unions, not just the teacher union, and they always will support us when we see a teacher or another staff member who's abusing their days, and we encourage them not to take Mondays and Fridays, and we talk about professional development on Mondays and Fridays, but by state law, teachers are entitled to those days, and so if they use them, and we don't suspect abuse, but the leadership of the teachers union is very supportive um, in trying to get there was some language in there to allow us to manage it a little bit better. Yeah, I think in terms of the report, mm -hmm. how they. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yes. uh, we so did ask them to log in. Yeah, so we, that's oh, probably not what you're asking, but a wee bit of help process is helpful. The issue was not lost in conversation about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I think it also it, maybe it's a morale thing, you know, and, and morale is better. That will be helpful to have people be more encouraged not to abuse sick leave policies. You know, I'm, I'm cautious of the world morale. Like, I guess, I think, because it gets thrown out and then it's very hard to, like, disprove it one way or the other, right? Um, so I'm just cautious of that word. Certainly, we hope our staff feels supported enough that they're passionate about their job. I think from what I hear in the administration, for the most part, our teachers show up to do their work. And Marge has always assured us that when there's a question, the union has been supported. Um, you know, you hear the board look look at it often because it's a lot of money um, and we'll continue to do that. I do think one thing we missed talking about, and Clara, you always talk about it, so um, I, I think you'll be happy. We did get tutoring. I, I was good. That was going to be my okay. next question. I, I, saw that. I, I saw that in there. Um, <laughs> and uh, we did get tutoring language in this contract, which um, I think will serve the district, the kids, and the teachers well. It's just very, very clear um, what the expectations are. Now, did you did you eliminate the policy about tutoring? There was a policy about tutoring, so did you kind of eliminate that and then put it in the contract? Because that would be a stronger thing to do. So um, there is a very very ancient policy on tutoring. I think last looked at in 1977. So this is now mm -hmm. contract language. Okay, I, the policy I'm thinking of is later than 1977. But anyway, and, and I think my pet peeve was not the tutors only, but to have coaches right. have, be also involved so that they are not um, strongly encouraging students to um, attend one of these for-profit, um, what do they call it? Sessions or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. like, yeah. 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 One of yeah. that's a different yeah. issue outside of the contract. It's right. really like a, a fair labor practice, and we've had this well. conversation lots of times, but within the best way to, to start this certainly around tutoring was to get it in the contract language, and that was achieved by this I think, I think, I did see that, I think it's very, okay, very I saw, good. how do you oversee that? I mean, how do you, how do you know? <laughs> um, well, a wee bit like how you know what Claire just mentioned uh, about the coaches, right? When somebody reports it, let's just say like that, right? Uh, when it comes to our attention, uh, we, we would we would hope and expect our, our professionals to act as professionals, I think they do, um, by and large, uh, but, but typically, Typically, we would look at that and oversee it, and the administration would oversee it as best they can, right? If anything comes to light that uh, we, we share it with, it, that policy has been shared now with uh, all the teachers because it's part of the contract and the, the changes had to be shared with them. Uh, our administration will continue to share the expectations around that. But in all honesty, like, I mean, just pragmatically, it'll probably come to light if someone violates something. Um, so sort I of want to be disingenuous about that. Uh, we certainly do our best to share the changes. Well, I thought what when I read that part, what I found did, um, you can't. It's easy, I guess, for an elementary school teacher because you will kind of know if somebody's coming into your grade and that you might potentially have them. But at the high school level, I feel, uh, unless I'm wrong, I feel like, say in June, you don't necessarily know if a kid is going to be in your class that fall or if you're teaching that class. That that might be somebody you're tutoring. It's it's. I just it seemed um, kind of difficult <laughs> to manage that. Yeah, well, it may not be it may not be uh, easy to manage, but I think the principles of it are, are where you want the values to be. 
I think it's also important that you have stated it here, so all of the employees, the staff, know the expectation. Mm -hmm. You know, I may think that's, especially because you have several new people who may not even know anything about, you know, that there's a concern. So. Peter, did you have more questions? I have a couple more. Okay. Um, turnover over time, how has it been? Do we know when we do some kind of exit survey with the people, is it money driven, is it satisfaction? Um, what is it? Like it's changed over time. So um, when I got here five years ago, I hired more teachers than I think I had hired in my entire career in another district. And we took a big turn for the better over this summer. So in the past, what, I, Dr. Adley, you did the yeah, math, right? It was about 13 percent in the past, and uh, you're, you're down to 10 or below now. Yeah, or below. The 13 turnout? The 13 percent over the past three years. This summer, it was it was well under 10, I think. So it made for the Annual summer. turnover is 13? <laughs> Yes, hi. Uh, it, it, it tends to be high, yes. Wow. Well, so I would say there's a, a couple things. And one, Marge always asks people for exit interviews. You can force someone to come sure. in and certainly ask them to share any reasons and give feedback. But also, I mean, to be frank, when you are turning over superintendents constantly and administrations and divisions, I think, you know, you probably get some teachers that are like a whole new rodeo, right? Like, is this what I'm looking for? So I think part of um, Hiring Dr. Adley and the board's really nationwide search was someone who was really committed to Darien, committed to the staff, committed to putting a vision together that everyone could follow along with. Um, to your point, not simply top down. And um, I think um, part of us introducing Dr. Adley um, last spring probably helped with that, and, and hopefully that continues. The other side of the coin is turnover is not always a bad thing. Right, sure. I mean, there are times when um, turnover is can be refreshing, but we don't want to see that ongoing. And, and with recruiting, how do we recruit? Was the acceptance rate, you know, was the? So I, I think Dr. Adley said we don't usually have people turn us down. We have a very rigorous process. So when we bring uh, applicants, we bring two to the superintendent, and they're pretty high caliber. And if they've gone through our process, they're pretty committed. So we go to job fairs, um, we concentrate, fair, we're going to job fairs in Fairfield County is easy, Sacred Heart and Fairfield U. A lot of students who go there live around here and they want to work here. So we have actually gone a little farther, we're at Manhattan Hill, we look at Fordham, we've been up to UConn. I talked to Dr. Adley today, a UConn alum, about trying to make UConn aware that Fairfield County exists and hopefully to make Darien um, a site where they'll place student teachers. So, you know, the same reason that we don't understand that UConn's still in the state of Connecticut. It, you know, it works both <laughs> ways sometimes. But UConn has one of the finest teacher prep programs in the country. And when we get um, applicants from there, we're very pleased. Columbia, have you recruited at Columbia? We try, they, the couple times that I've been to that job fair, they sort of walk right by Fairfield County because they're more, pl they're plugged into inner city and, sure. you know, I will say from the, uh, 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 the outside, the Furfield uh, group, Darien is a very, uh, I just think it, 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 well, it's what, what's attracted me to, right? It's a very desirable place to work. And one of the things, again, to be repetitive a wee bit was, uh, and is for people who come here, the commitment of the teachers and the commitment to professional learning of teachers and joint, just what you said, Peter, not for the money necessarily, uh, but to be part of that type of community. You still have to start? Okay. Uh, this 2.09 FTEs that we're reducing now, you said 120 people now, 120 teachers will go from four and a half to five, right? So that should actually result maybe to eight to 10 if I'm calculating it right. Uh, overall, we might want to do it through attrition, but am I right on the number? So that probably represents about 19 teachers. Right, 19. It was about 19 teachers, yeah. So even more. Um, and we want to do it through attrition over time. Yes. No, it's nine, it's right on the, the so right now you've got 19, 19 people are the people who are already teaching five classes, right? And they will actually, they will actually be teaching five classes now, but getting paid less. So they used to receive right. a stipend for it. Now they will actually not have that stipend. Yeah. I think you mentioned that 120 people go from from four and a half to five. Did I hear that? Over right? oh, like I mean that's what's available to over time, yes. Over time, over time not next yeah. year. Not over time. Yeah. Correct. So over time you're going to get to five, which you get. 
get you know the reduction yeah. in the people that we don't need anymore. Right? Yes, that's it's right. probably ten. About, about, about ten, 10 right? Yeah, 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 right? Yes, correct. Yeah. So that's the idea that over yeah, over the next yeah. three four years we will see we reduce two today, and then additional eight unless there's a changes in the correct. Okay, does it? Okay. Okay, I just yeah. wanted to tie what yeah. Peter was that conversation to the two hundred thousand in realized savings that you talked about. Yeah. Is that again over time? Yeah. No, that's, no, that's, that's immediate. That's what I thought. Yeah. I thought you said immediate. Okay. Uh, I, we didn't so, even. We didn't even project. Yes, that's immediate. So over time, it'll be a larger correct. amount. Okay, got it. But okay. you said six hundred thousand in the three, three, three years. Oh, yeah. the time yeah. of the contract. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank I just you. wanted to get my timeline right. Thank you, uh, Teresa. I, so this is not in the context, but I was thinking that maybe this is something as a district we need to look at in three years the next contract. So I noticed a little section where teachers, I guess, they're obviously they are required to come to the evening fall open houses, and they are highly encouraged but not required to come to other evening events. Um, I know, uh, <laughs> I don't have kids in the elementary schools, but I know that this year the conference conferences were a big issue uh, for some of the elementary school parents because we have a lot of dual working households now, which Darian seems to be moving towards, and it's I just saw a lot of comments from mothers saying that it was really hard for them to get to these morning conferences or afternoon conferences with their students' teachers um, because they, they have to arrange their whole work schedule and, not, and many of them aren't local, they work in New York City. So I feel like in the next contract, we need to perhaps put at least one night of parent-teacher conferences. So this, this contract allows for an extra night activity outside of the house to be determined by the superintendent. So this contract, in theory, if what your goal is, is there a requirement for teachers for another night, how the superintendent chooses to use that is up to the administration. This is this contract that you all hopefully will not reject on Monday um, allows for an extra evening, or requires an extra evening for teachers. So the union president and I had that discussion yesterday. What are we using this for conferences or otherwise in still? So possibly it could be a conference. Um, I do have two more things if oh. I can. Okay, uh, well, I'll take a couple sure. things. Okay, yeah, yeah, sure. okay. Um, as you said, um, it's our charge not to reject the contract if mm -hmm. that's our, our interest. Um, what would you, tell me three things you'd like me to say to convince the RTM that this is a good contract other than what's in the memo? Me, I mean, anybody. You want to pick your, you want to pick your top three? I, <laughs> mine. I think it. I, I think it's. Um, it, it's a fiscally responsible uh, contract uh, to the taxpayers, and also a fair contract uh, to the teachers. Okay. Well, look, we were in sync. I was going to say it's a, it's a fair contract to the teachers. It represent. It, it respects the taxpayers of Darien. Yeah. Yeah. And I can just also say, yeah. I just dip in. It sends a very powerful message to your staff. If, just, like, if there's collective support for it, you, that, you can't underestimate. Um, yes, the discussion, I understand the dialogue and, and the need for that. Um, but supporting a, a contract as supportively as you can says a lot to, to the teachers for how you value them. I think the process seems more collaborative this year too, from at least what I'm hearing, that the, the faculty and teachers and board are working cooperatively. On the contract? On the contract. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that give, there was a give, lot of give and take. Give there take were a lot well. of meetings. Yeah. Um, you know, we can't discuss negotiations because they're confidential, but I would say that I, I felt as a board chair that I, I, I think the union would, would Say the same without speaking for them that people felt heard. Mm -hmm. um, we did not always agree. People felt <coughs> hurt, 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 hurt. We did not sure. always agree. <laughs> okay. But I do think um, the process allowed for people to feel heard. Anything, Peter? Did you want to? I do have two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This uh, this Article Eight, Section Six, is tuition reimbursement that uh, you know we have fifty thousand dollars sort of carve out for people to go and get a grad degree. Has it been there last time, and has it been used with teachers? So I have this idea, maybe it's romantic, that the initiatives comes from the teachers, teacher talking to a teacher. Not building, you know, 
across from the there and talk, you know, the teacher talks to the teacher and says, hey, listen, I have a new, there's enough something about Shakespeare, you should go to, you know, go for a day or two to, to learn about in Columbia University. And the teacher says, well, I'll go. So, you know, we have these carve outs in the, in the contract about, you know, teacher driven education, self education, professional development. Has, do people use it? People yeah, raise you, their you hands and say, but that's primarily for tuition based reimbursement. Yes. So those are primarily, this, 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 for, you know, if they're going to go to take more credit at a, a, for graduate Did people graduate use it last time? Did they actually, so the teachers So the aren't usage has probably proactive. been only about half of that, but what yeah. we did in addition in this contract is raise the amount per credit yeah. and the number of credits per year. Because you know tuition is not right. anything like $750 for a three credit class. Yeah. Right. So hope, we're hoping that teachers yeah. will use it more. So we're already getting in some requests for next year because of the increased limits. Okay, but in terms of the kind of question that you asked about a teacher saying to another teacher, you know, this is a great class on Shakespeare, that kind of thing might be handled through professional development or through the funds like the Reese Fund. Uh, you might want to talk yes. a little bit yeah. about that or the, um, the DA, DAEG Fund. They also fund teachers' excitement and, you know, um, ideally, you know, it's a teacher who comes to another teacher and wants to bring back a method of teaching to a classroom, and that's isn't that funded by those? It is. I programs. mean, it's off contract, but right. Um, but it, so yes, we have tuition reimbursement for teachers, and everything Marge said is true. Um, and then we also have there are other ways in town, both both through RPD and through outside groups that actually fund and give grants for teachers to do it. And we see everything from teachers taking yoga to Shakespeare through these grants to um, mindfulness to like exciting tech courses that I would fail, but apparently my kids would do well in, you know. And, and I, so I do think there's innovation there, but I think it's important that, you know, we want teachers finishing their degrees. We want teachers to feel like they can finish their degrees. And so that this fund, you know, we encourage teachers to take it, they apply for it, and, and we came up with this new formula with the DEA, um, and, and hopefully that they utilize it. And that um, promotes a column change in the contract, right? I mean, that's the whole idea that they move from, from you know, MA to MA plus 15 or plus 30, so that... Well, that's the incentive. Well, that's the idea behind it is that they're stronger and more. Um. For Peter's question, in the sense of a teacher, a teacher probably feels um, if, this, if, if the professional development impact what I'm doing in the classroom with the kids, right, and are also aligned to my personal professional goals, that's, that's the ideal situation. Right. And there's opportunities for, for teachers to actually pursue those things. Yeah. Uh, so so that, that's basically what I have for the contract. I just hope that next time when we meet, maybe some of the measurable goals will be there once you say, okay, this is eternally, you know, and all, all of these things. But if I may, if you know me for like 30 seconds here, I've been pushing on Lisa in her in her uh, work on the steering committee and on, on her. So no, nobody might agree with this, but this is my, and we have you here in the room, so I just want to take the opportunity for 30 seconds. Sure. So how I see the system, that should work, right? And I wrote it down because I've been emailing these two ladies who have to tell them to stop already. Um, in my opinion, the teachers are the stars in the system. They are closest to the students. They appreciate the differences, different ways that kids learn differently. And administration is to just to support them and not direct them how to teach. So we should set measurable goals for them, rigorously test them across grades, same test for the whole grade six in history, but give them freedom how to teach, how to get there. So if somebody wants to teach, and this is the same example I gave last time, so they may be bored of it, is somebody wants to teach World War II through FDR's fire set chats, and another guy wants to teach, another teacher wants to teach it through autobiography of Churchill, they should be allowed to do that. So long as at the end of the year, the knowledge base of the teacher, is of the student, is the same. And uh, from the feedback that I hear from teachers, from few teachers that I talk to, not many, and again, they may not agree with me, that's just my opinion, is there's a lot of top-down directives for everybody to teach the same. And I think that top-down is the meaning to the teacher and style to the retention of the best people. And with every initiative, I think, whether it's iPads, Chromebooks, we should ask whether it's the teachers ask or whether somebody in that building where you guys work says, we need more computers, it's a good idea, we want to check the box that we are the most progressive. Okay, Does it help the teachers learn? Anyway, we're done with the contract. I'm just, yeah, I will throw it out there, I have you guys in the room. One important thing are, is that's, that's more comments? budget, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, 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 no. Okay, um, that's more budget 
question, which we have submitted as one of our budget questions, and we have to stick to the agenda. Okay, so this is about this meeting is about the budget. Did you have a question, Ed? Well, it was more on Peter's side. Okay, go ahead. Well, look, just like not that I necessarily want to disagree, but rightly or wrongly, like we in the last budget cycle, there was the initiative to have curriculum development directors, and that is by definition top down, and this is what you're going to have to do. And part of the reason we did that, and I'm, I think, why the superintendent did that, because there were issues where teachers were doing one thing in one class and another thing in another class, and then by the time they got to wherever, so. I'm not saying what you're saying is wrong, and I don't mean to be defending the curriculum development uh, directors, because I think I was kind of against it in the last budget cycle. <laughs> but I'm just saying it's like, um, as a committee, you know, Peter speaking for himself, and maybe there are a bunch of other people that would actually agree with them, but I'm just sensitive to the fact that we can't like ping pong with the, with the board as to what we sort of want, and for some, and even if what you're saying, even if I agree with it 100%, it's like, that's like if we were going down that path, we can't just change it next year, or if that is my view. So but I also think there's a difference between curriculum development and a style, a teacher's style inside the classroom. And I don't I think agree. anybody's telling them how to stylistically teach. They're just telling them what to teach. <laughs> and and well, I look, I agree with some of what you are saying, but like in a college setting in particular, I just don't know in elementary school how that potentially works when that someone shows up not knowing how to read, so. Well, I think that's important, but I guess what your example was, do you want to teach World War II from Churchill's perspective or FDR's? That's definitely, a high, probably more like a high school situation than an elementary school situation, and, and I think maybe teachers do make those kinds of choices, and that's okay. I mean, not, that's what I, my experience was, but that's a while ago. Um, okay, Any, anything, you're done, okay. Um, do you have anything else to say to us before we vote? Thank you for inviting us here. Okay. No, I mean, I would just say, uh, yeah, thank you for your consideration. Certainly, we hope you vote not to reject it. That's kind of what the vote is, because the other option is arbitration, which right. I don't think anyone wants to go to. I'd say that. Um, you want to give the Jack Davis speech? <laughs> no, I don't want to give Jack's speech. I don't want to take his thunder. I'm not sure anybody could take Jack's thunder. Um, or actually, in some ways, some knowledge based on these things, but I, I, I can assure you that the contract was negotiated in good faith with the town's best interest in mind, students' best interest in mind. Let me reverse those students, the town, and the teacher. So um, I think there was real fidelity in the process, and we hope that um, you can support that. Thank you, and thank you for all, all for coming. Okay, can we have a motion? Um, not to reject the teacher contract of I will make that motion. Um, the, the contract with the Darien Education Association for the uh, years stated in the contract. Okay, Anne and second. Barbara. Okay, second. All those in favor of not rejecting the said contract. Okay, that is unanimous. Um, okay, I think that our work for tonight is done. I'll break this up in some very simple language, um, and I'd be happy to have um, ideas if you want to send me anything or, um, you know, wordsmith anything that I send to you, um, and I will let you have, you know what I'm going to say before Monday night, okay? Does that work for everybody? Yep. Okay. Thank right, you, thank